What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're gonna check out this old mystery Carvin 2x12 cab that I purchased off Guitar Center's website. Let's do it! All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle, and what I do is I take awesome high gain amps, overdrive guitar cabs, speakers, and pickups. I record them with a simple SM57 setup, and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes that are thinking about how bad their knees are gonna hurt for the rest of the day after making this video, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right guys, so this is a very impromptu video. I purchased this cab, uh, was browsing Guitar Center's used site a few days ago, found this cab, 149 bucks, uh, immediately I went and tried to look up some info on it. It was listed as the HE212. Uh, I found out that HE stands for high energy and it has high energy branded uh, carbon manufactured speakers in it. That's about all I could find because everything else brought up completely different cabs. When I searched two by 15 cabs of the same name, I got a lot more results, but the 212 cab was like kind of a ghost on the internet. So I had a really hard time kind of figuring out what the deal with this cab was. And honestly, when I purchased it, I almost thought the Guitar Center had it incorrectly labeled as a 212 and it was a 215. But the good thing about Guitar Center is when you order something from them, if you're close to a store, if they screw up or if it shows up and it's the wrong item, or if it shows up and it's broken, or if it shows up and it's not as advertised, you can return it and get your shipping back. So I always take the chance of ordering something knowing that I just have to make a 15 minute drive down the road to return it if it's not what was advertised. Because nine times out of 10, I end up with a really great deal and a really cool piece of gear, as opposed to ending up with something that was not as advertised. Uh, and having to return it. So I like those odds, I like those chances, and I've ended up with a lot of really cool stuff because I've been willing to take the risk. So with that out of the way, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and order this thing. It looks cool, it's, a, it's an oversized vertical 212. I don't have an oversized vertical 212 in my arsenal as of yet, so figured I might as well grab this thing and at 149 bucks if it shows up and the cab itself is good and the speakers are garbage. I got plenty of speakers I can throw in here and I'll do a little experimentation. It was delivered to me yesterday. I plugged it in this morning with the 5150 50 watt stealth and was immediately surprised at how much I liked it. Uh, I was actually very, very caught off guard. I was expecting these speakers to sound bad. I couldn't really find any info on them. In fact, I, I couldn't find any info on them at all other than they were carbon manufactured speakers from 1986 to 1989 before they introduced the British series. Now I sent the speaker information to Michael at Omega Amplification because he's a massive speaker guru. He was able to tell me that it uses the same cone as the British uh, Carvin GT100, which is a speaker that Mick Thompson apparently really likes and comes in the carpeted Carvin 412s. They're really ugly looking, but they're very well built cabinets. But he even couldn't really identify the speaker other than that. He, he figured that they're probably pretty similar, but it's kind of tough to tell without really getting, you know, the sticker information off of the speaker. But we're going to take a look at this thing. We're gonna dive into it a little bit. My knees are already hurting me from sitting like this. Um, I'm gonna take the side handle off and we'll take a look inside the cab and see what this thing is made of, see the construction of the cab and try to get a better look at the speakers if we can. And then we'll go ahead and play through it. And uh, you know, I'm gonna mic it up with an SM57 and see if we can get some decent tones. Let's do it. All right guys, so real quick, we'll take a quick look around the cab. It's uh, dirty, but overall it's in really good condition. Like as soon as I clean up the Tolex, pull off this front metal grate, clean that off and clean the piping, it'll probably look really good. Um, I'm generally not a huge fan of metal grate front cabinets. I feel like they look cheap, but I, I know that that was kind of like the thing for a lot of cabs in the 80s. Mesa did it, PV did it, Carvin did it. So kind of a popular design, so I understand, but Go around to the side here. This thing does not have any casters, by the way, and it's actually fairly heavy for a 212. We've got kind of the classic uh, two-piece handle over here. It's 100% plastic. Not a fan of that, as you can see. Already cracking up here. Do not like these handles at all, but they were kind of like a budget handle from the 80s. And then we go to the back. We've got a completely sealed back panel, which is always good to see. And then here we've got 
the information plate and the jack plate, um, we've got a serial number. Like it says, V212-H high energy, uh, shows our impedance as eight watts. I'm trying to keep it in focus. I don't know why it keeps going out of focus, sorry. Let's get closer, there we go. Impedance is eight ohms, 300 watt power handling, and it has a fuse, no idea why it's got a fuse. But yeah, we've got an input here and then an output uh, right next to it. So if we wanna plug it into an additional cab, we can do so. Okay guys, so on the side of the cab here, I have the handle removed. Here's what you wanna look at when you pull apart a cab. This is the first thing, cause this will tell you what the main portion of the cab is manufactured out of. And here you can see we've got plywood, which is awesome. Uh, you guys can go ahead and count the layers. I haven't counted them yet. Um, but yeah, plywood is what generally you're gonna want. Um, MDF or particle board or chipboard as people call it is not really an ideal material for guitar cabinets. In my personal opinion, it just kind of sucks up too many of the frequencies. It works great for PA speakers where you want to kind of neutralize everything and flatten everything out um, and have a bigger low end response. But for guitar cabs, you really want those frequencies kind of bouncing around inside the cab and creating some more musical frequencies overall. But uh, again, I'll, I'll do a, a comparison of an MDF cab versus a Birch cab in the future. But I sent this over to Mike at Omega and he actually told me that this cab uh, would be made of mahogany plywood. So that's interesting because most plywood cabinets that you tear apart are Birch, but Birch is usually quite a bit lighter. As you can see here, this is pretty dark in color overall. So I found that really interesting and actually more exciting because you know, last thing I need is another Birch cab. So moving inside the cab here, there are the, I'm not gonna be able to probably get a good shot of the back of the speaker, but these are the high efficiency carbon speakers that we talked about. And then here we have a really large uh, reinforcement. You know, a lot of cabs will usually have like a post here. This is literally an entire piece of plywood. So that's going to stiffen up the cab significantly. So it's gonna be a pretty tight sounding cab despite it being a larger cab. This is a very large 212, definitely on the oversized side. It's actually probably bigger than my orange, but not quite as deep. Um, moving to the back here, you guys can see we have kind of the, the insulation material. Um, usually not a huge fan of this in my cabs, as again, it soaks up a lot of those higher frequencies. But we have a metal front cab here, which is where I've kind of seemed to like it the most. I've noticed Angle does this on their metal front cabs and it keeps them from being overly bright. Um, not sure if I'll leave this in here, but maybe I will. The back panel here, as we can see, ply again. There's our jack plate hookup. There's our input and output. And that's pretty much all there is to say about the inside of the cab. It looks to be, you know, decently well built. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and hear how this thing sounds. All right, guys, so we are now set up on the Carvin cab. I have the EVH5153. 50 watt, 6L6 stealth. God, that's such a mouthful to say every single time I try to say it. And we also have the DSL20H here, just to kind of give you guys some common amps that uh, you know, you're know you probably familiar with the general tone of through this cabinet. I have an SM57 going directly on the speaker, as close as I could get it to the metal grill. You don't want it to touch like you do on grill cloth because that, that metal grill will move a little bit and it'll cause some vibrations, which will sound really nasty on the recording. Um, I have the mic placed straight on and I actually have it a little bit inside of the dust cap because it is a, a, a fairly darker sounding speaker. So I played around with the positions of the mic a little bit and I found that just outside the center of the dust cap seemed to suit the speaker the best, made it the most well-balanced sounding. So without further ado, we are on the blue channel of the EVH and uh, I'll show you guys some tones with this thing.
All right, so first impressions. This cabin speaker is fairly dark. Now, I wouldn't say it is muffled or anything. I actually think that this thing sounds really good. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised at how much I like it. Eminent speakers are very hit or miss for me. They have a signature mid-range kind of hollowness thing going on that uh, I tend to really have a hard time settling in with, but I actually think that this cab sounds, sounds really good with the stock uh, Eminence Carbon High Energy speakers in it. It's got a lot of low end push. This thing sounds like a 412, like it's massive. Um, the low end on the EVH is just thumping through this thing. So I actually almost feel like I should probably dial the resonance back a little bit as that low end would definitely get a little bit uh, lost in a mixed setting and create a little bit of mud. But here in the room playing by myself, it's thumping. It's got a lot of low end push, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, it's relaxed in the highs and it actually takes pretty well to the highs being pushed on the amp as well as the mids. A lot of people say if you don't like the sound or an EQ of a speaker, just EQ the amp to the speaker. It doesn't always work because sometimes certain speakers don't take well to you pushing certain frequencies on amps or the amp and the speaker just don't really pair together all that well. So I always kind of found that advice to be a little bit silly because uh, it's not always going to work. It's good advice. You should absolutely try it. But if you don't like what you get after EQing for a while, then switch to a different speaker or switch to a different amp and see if something pairs better with your setup. But anyways, I'm getting in the weeds as uh, I usually do. So uh, yeah, I think it sounds good. The mids, when I pushed on the EVH, it's definitely way more rounded in the mid range than a V30 would be as most eminent speakers are. I have yet to meet an eminent speaker with a spiky mid range. They're all very kind of round in the mid range, even if they're a mid forward speaker. Not a bad thing, just you know, very different to what you would be accustomed to with a V30 type speaker. Overall, it takes to the high gain thing very well. I will say, not the clearest speaker in the world as I'm listening to it here in the room, like when I was doing kind of the chord ring outs and stuff, some of the detail of the notes that I was playing was kind of disappearing. That I'm not necessarily a huge fan of, but everything else I'm, I'm enjoying so far. So let's go over to the red channel, get some red channel tones on this thing. <laughs> Not bad. I definitely don't mind it. Uh, on this channel, it's definitely brighter on the top end. The mids are cutting through a little bit more as well. I feel like this channel kind of fits the cab a little bit better because it is more tight uh, than the blue channel. Overall, I dig it. No real complaints. It, it's definitely different from a V30 sounding cabinet. It's very huge sounding for a 212, which uh, I find very pleasant. I really dig that. Uh, we want it to sound massive and punchy and a lot of 212 designs are pretty compact. Even the Mesa Rectifier 212 and the EVH that I like a lot, they're fairly small in size and that kind of results in a little bit more of a boxy sound. Let's go over to the DSL, check that out and we'll call it a day on this thing. All right guys, we are on the DSL 20H. I still have the Electric Eye Mud Killer Boost on in front. Let's hear how this thing sounds. <laughs> Not bad. I don't know that I'm loving the Electric Eye Mud Killer on the Marshall. Let's switch over to a Boss SD1 because that's a classic boost for pretty much any Marshall. There we go. That's definitely uh, aggressive. It's uh, not as forward in the mids, which, you know, the Marshall's already very forward. So I feel like this accents it a little bit better. I said accents really weird there. So go ahead and flame me in the comments. Okay, riffs.
right, guys, that is gonna do it for me today on the Carvin H212V, I think is what the model was. It's the one with the high energy speakers in it. What the hell did that say? Yes, H212-V, really cool cab. Really glad that I took the plunge and purchased it. Again, I hope that this is helpful for somebody in the future who is looking at this cabinet, not really knowing what they're gonna get from it. Because I've found a lot of times looking at older carbon cabs, a lot of older PV cabs and stuff, I don't know what I'm gonna get when I purchase those because there aren't really any good demos of the cabs or the speakers that come in them. So if you guys would like to see more videos like this, I do have a bunch of like older PV cabs, older carbon cabs and just obscure cabs in general. And uh, I can definitely do some more videos similar to this where I show you the strengths and weaknesses of the cab. I show you the build of the cab, what speakers they come with and everything. So if you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. What the hell's wrong with you? Don't you wanna be belligerent like me? And if you'd like to support what it is that I'm doing here, down in the description of this video are all my support links, including my Sweetwater affiliate link. You click on that link, get yourself something nice from the fine folks of Sweetwater. Costs you nothing extra, and I get a little kickback in return, so it greatly helps me grow and be able to afford weird, obscure cabs to make videos for you guys with. You can also consider becoming a member of my Patreon community like these fine people right here, who I seriously appreciate so much, and support the channel that way. And finally, consider becoming a member of the belligerent amateur community by joining my Discord group and my Facebook server, all down in the description of this video. Kyle here again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.